This is the only kind of drink Jessica Hurst buys these days, a chai latte before work. But for many years, drinking alcohol was also part of her day-to-day -day life. If I was like stressed at work or if I was feeling social anxieties about going to a party or going out or something like that, it would always help and then there would be a high and then it would be such a crash after. Yeah, I think Last like, year, the Toronto resident yeah, began wondering how drinking was impacting her existing anxiety and depression and she decided to cut alcohol out. I still deal with the date stay anxieties and the things that still exist with those diagnoses, but um, it's a lot more manageable. It's no secret a night of drinking can be hard on the brain, from mood changes to headaches. A growing body of research also suggests there could be long-term impacts on cognition, brain aging and mental health. Alcohol in the short term can make us feel good, most of us know that. But scientist Tim Stockwell it. says um, it technically acts as a depressant for the body's central nervous system. That lift of mood um, is replaced by tiredness, fat fatigue and the anxiety returning. Now what happens when we drink more heavily is that cycle is accelerated and exaggerated. The World Health Organization says alcohol use is a risk factor for mental health conditions. While a 2022 paper in the journal Nature Communications linked moderate drinking to changes in brain matter similar to aging, even for people consuming an average of only one to two daily drinks. We also now know from population studies that people who drink more, unfortunately, are at greater risk of developing dementia. This is the Peter Boris Center. This Hamilton, Ontario researcher uses a lab styled like a bar to study how people react to different doses of alcohol. He says it's tough to know the safe amount of drinks per week to avoid any alcohol-related brain changes, but says any efforts to cut back are worthwhile. We should think about brain health the way we think about uh, every other kind of health. You know, heart disease health, cancer risk health. I think that in many ways the brain is the uh, most important organ insofar as it is who we are. Oh, you would like something, wouldn't you? Nigel Bowes has long battled with his brain. Depression is a big part of his life, and for many years, so was alcohol. I found it funny when people said, you know what, you shouldn't drink because alcohol is a depressant. Well, it didn't make me feel bad, right? It actually make me, made me feel a lot better. I, I, I found but those benefits he found were short-lived, while the hangovers and regrets began piling up. And a few years ago, he gave up drinking for good. I'm still going to have issues that I had before when I was drinking, but I can solve them, or at least I can try to solve them. Okay. Quitting drinking didn't make his mental health issues go away, but it brought Bose more mental clarity. Ironically, even though I feel more of my depression and I feel more of my anxiety and I feel more of those parts, they don't hurt and that makes me happy. So, Lorna, it, it strikes me that the people you met, I mean, it's really hard. They, they cut out drinking entirely. But what about the people who just cut it out a little bit? Well, the scientists I spoke to said there's still a benefit to doing that. It's never too late to reassess your drinking habits, and it's never too late to gain some of those benefits from cutting back a bit. So that means dry January may lead to dry February for some people? Yeah, I mean, let's be realistic. If you've been a heavier drinker for many years, a month of giving it up isn't going to magically fix mm -hmm. any of the brain damage that might have been happening. But scientists say the brain is a really flexible organ. It can almost repair itself to some extent over time. Uh, I'm actually doing dry January this year myself. I've done it before. Anecdotally, I can say that I've been really sleeping pretty well. So, you know, it's worth just considering taking that month off and just seeing how you feel, almost like a mini scientific experiment. All right, Lauren Pelly, thank you. You're welcome.